let's say you won the lottery, or that Nigerian prince actually did send you the money. Which cars would you buy? All of them. But to make it more interesting, you have a very limited garage space. So, how about now? Hey guys, I'm Stipe, and this is my dream 10, 5, 3, 2, 1 cars garage. Let's go shopping. 10 cars. I was going to start with 10 garage spots, but honestly, it just felt like being Michael Jackson in that antique shop. Bought these, bought this one, this one, these, these, right? I ran out of ideas after just seven cars, and the last three were just thrown in there to fill it up. So let's make it more challenging and skip straight to five cars. Now it gets interesting. If you fall under this category of my viewers, I'm guessing your garage will be full of supercars, but for the rest of us, we want more variety. Starting with the daily driver, a car meant for being stuck in slow-moving traffic, sitting at red lights, dealing with some bumps and rough patches on the road. It's not fun, it's irritating. And for that reason, I'll go with the ultimate relaxation, a spa on wheels, the Mercedes EQS. Just look at that interior all white and plushy and peaceful, but it goes beyond that. Since the EQS is electric, it means that it's almost completely silent, and to keep that zen-like serenity unbroken, the noise-canceling speakers and all the special paddings are there to block out any outside rattle, too. Someone revving their fart box Honda right next to you? You'll never even notice. One more thing, the EQS comes equipped with over 300 sensors, which ensures that you can relax while the car drives itself. But if you're still cranky about the traffic, the sensors can pick up your mood and try to improve it with massages, ambient lights, and aromas. Like I said, it's a spa. Next up is something for the heart, the Pagani Zonda F, or in other words, my favorite super slash hypercar of all time. There may be faster and more powerful things around. There are even other Paganis, but the Zonda F, for me at least, is the most special one. It has a naturally aspirated V12, which howls like a wounded beast. Only 25 were ever made, and they shine with a subdued grace that most other Paganis have slightly lost. All those telescopic intakes, moving nostrils, and dive planes, they're not my kind of thing. Moreover, the Zonda is Italian, as a supercar should be, so don't expect it to be some technical tour de force like a Bugatti. No, this car is mostly art. And that's what I prefer. Give me the theater. Make me emotional. I want to experience a car, not just test it with a stopwatch. Oh, I've had a crisis. Next up is the 1969 Corvette C3 convertible. Red body, white top, black interior, and with a small block V8. Don't you love that phrase? A small block, but still bigger than what you'll find in most performance cars these days. Anyway, the 69 C3 is not just my favorite Corvette, but my favorite classic car as well. V8 rumble, four-speed manual, side exhaust, and the design, <laughs> my oh my. That Coke bottle shape with the long hood, slim waist, and sharp metal blades instead of the bumpers. I've got a soft spot for many classic cars, but for this one, that spot is hard. I guess I should explain. Before YouTube, I used to be a graphic designer, so I'm a sucker for all things pretty, cars included. But why not the 427 big block, you ask? Well, because I don't want to get myself killed. 430 horsepower doesn't sound like much today, but in a 50-year-old car with a suspension technology that dates back to Jesus' time and no safety features at all, that can easily get too dangerous. So, no thanks. Now for something incredibly versatile and practical, like the new Range Rover, except I'd go for the GLS 580 instead. Not very creative to be picking a Mercedes, I agree, I know, I agree with you, but the Range Rovers are notorious for their lack of reliability, and I don't want to have my practical car broken when I need it the most. And before you hit dislike because I'm including an SUV in a perfect garage, well, what's wrong with that? The GLS is one of the most complete vehicles out there. It's got a prestigious badge, German build quality, luxury interior, seven seats, or gigantic trunk if you fold most of them down. It can even go off-road, so why waste garage spots on many cars when one can do the job? And lastly, an aerial atom? Maybe? Man, I'm not a big fan of track day cars. I'd rather be spending my day traveling across continents in an Aston Martin Vanquish Zagato, the shooting brake version. Astons, in my opinion, are the pinnacle of Grand Tourers, but 
give them the Zagato coach building, handcrafting treatment, and now we're talking god tier level of perfection. Beautiful, exclusive V12. And because of a shooting brake body, surprisingly practical too. This car is like a more usable Zonda F, and I must have it. But let's make it more interesting still. Three cars. Okay, I still want one daily car. The EQS is great, but the GLS is better. Like I mentioned before, it is a jack of all trades. And don't think that the GLS is lacking in the spa department. It too has the mood monitoring kit. It's just a little less silent. But then again, an SUV is much more versatile. So on the whole, it wins the spot. The Zonda F stays because I find it impossible to say no to it. I mean, just look at it. As far as the Corvette and Zagato, how about a combination of those two? Like the Singer 911 DLS. It's a handmade, coach-built, classic car that's very special, exclusive, and quite simply, a work of art. I'll admit, I'm not a Porsche guy. I prefer Ferrari and even more Lamborghini, but the Singer has completely won me over. It has that classic 911 shape, but come closer and you'll see all of those little details that make it so very different and very special. Like that roof spoiler thingy. Instead of bolting on an ugly protruding deck, as so many do, Singer had sunk the roof so the design isn't ruined. Or these intakes that feed the air into a flat V6, which was developed by the Williams F1 team, makes better noise than the actual F1 car. The interior is stunning. The wheel arches are stunning. Even these hinges are stunning. It's a classic car turned into a piece of art. I love that thing. But would I love it if I had to only choose two cars? The practical GLS remains. And as for the Singer or the F? F. The heart wants what the heart wants. It's simple as that. But what if I only had to pick one car? So, one car that would be my daily, my fun, my go to skiing, go to a fancy restaurant, and go to Ikea car. Clearly, the Zonda fails most of these, so it doesn't get the spot, but does that mean the GLS stays? No, absolutely not. It's not much fun rolling around in something that weighs more than an average cathedral. There needs to be a car that has it all, one car to rule them all. This, the Porsche Cayenne Turbo SE Hybrid, an SUV that can do well on a track as well as off-road. Not that anyone would ever take them to both those places, but it's good to know. Plus, it's a hybrid. How you use that hybrid for a cleaner tomorrow or a speedier today, that's up to you. The interior is spacious, trunk too. It's a complete package, but this is not a car I would go for. Hell, I can bet that a majority of you wouldn't go for it either. Although the Cayenne Turbo Hybrid strikes the perfect balance with these mutually exclusive abilities, it's not the only car that's so multi-talented, and that's where we get the personal preferences. This is brilliant, but I like this. Those who value practicality over performance, they would most likely go for the GLS. Those who care about brand exclusivity and more speed will choose the Lamborghini Urus. The Audi RS6 is often the fan favorite. There's also a fully electric Taycan Cross Turismo for the fans of Greta Thunberg. Me though, I value design and performance much more than practicality and off-roadness. And so, I choose the Ferrari GTC4 Lusso. Being a shooting brake means that it looks better than any SUV or fast wagon, and when it comes to excitement, none of these can match the rage and the roar of the Ferrari V12. Oh, I've had a crisis. Plus, let's not forget, this is also an all-wheel drive car. Realistically, though, it won't go far when the road ends, but it will get you to your favorite ski resort, and that's enough for me. Other drawbacks, the trunk space is not very large, but it gets better when you fold the seats down. Speaking of the rear seats area, they're not cramped. According to the reviewers, there's a lot of room in the back, even if you were born with legs and a head. Getting there, however, can be a bit of a hassle since there are no rear doors and you have to do some squeezing through, but I fail to see how that's my problem. I'm behind the wheel. If you don't like it, you can take your own damn car, am I right? But that's just me. I'm more interested to hear which cars you would buy if you had pockets bigger than your garage. Write in the comments and I'll reveal my favorite picks on Instagram. And...